Welcome to The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa, your weekly reminder that important conversations are a necessary tool for a saner society. Today, I'm educating us on Down syndrome. Felix talks about Nigeria's government in competition with its youth. Juliet wants us to diversify our earnings, and Kayade is talking about issues concerning Nigerians. As always, your panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holds barred. Stay with us. Down Syndrome Awareness Do you know that October is Global Down Syndrome Month? Well, it is. So let me tell you a little bit about Down Syndrome. The scientific name is Trisomy 21 and it is a genetic condition where a baby is born with an extra copy of chromosome 21. That means, instead of having 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mom and 23 from the dad, they are born with 47 because of an extra copy of chromosome 21. Common characteristics of the condition are upward slanted eyes, flat face, low muscle tone, developmental and learning delays. Down syndrome is not contagious. You can't catch it from someone like COVID. It is something you're born with. Approximately 40 to 60% of those diagnosed will have some kind of heart condition as well. They are also prone to other health challenges such as poor hearing, eyesight and dental issues. This is what most medical professionals will tell parents who find out their fetus or baby has this condition. Many will also say that the child won't walk, talk, be able to attend school and will be a burden to you and family. On the cultural side of things, it is regarded as a white man's condition. Parents will be told to take the child to church for a cure, to pray and fast and even put the baby on a fast. They are advised to send the child to the village or an orphanage since the child will be an imbecile and useless. Often the blame is put on the mother that she did something during her pregnancy or that a curse was put on them and so that is why they have such a child. Frequently, the child with Down syndrome is hidden and kept indoors, away from prying eyes. This is just a quick summary of the kind of things that go on. So I'd like to tell you another story of a beautiful baby girl who was given a late diagnosis of Down syndrome, who almost died because of heart failure as a result. But by the grace of God is now six years old, thriving, breaking myths, prejudices, and stereotypes about Down syndrome. That baby girl is my daughter, Simone. As some of you know, I am a children's book author as well as content producer and aggregator of kids content on my platform, Simone's Oasis. Our slogan being empowering the African child through entertainment. I entered this unexpected pivot in career directly as a result of having a child with Down syndrome. I wrote and published a book for children called Ugo and Sim Sim, What is Down Syndrome? based on a conversation I had with my son about his sister. I understood early on in my special needs journey to speak up about what it is like to raise a child with Down syndrome, to hold a light and the truth up to the blatant lies and myths that permeate the discourse. I want to let you know that people with special needs have a right to be cared for, loved, invested in, and given a chance to be fully functioning members of society. My role as an advocate is to make the way for my daughter and others like her. You see, the problem isn't with them, it's with us, the larger society, and our assumptions about their capabilities. Do you know that people with Down syndrome can read, write, go to school, have jobs, get married, and have quote-unquote normal children? Yep, they can. It's all about changing our mindset about their capabilities. Investing and nurturing such children, for example, with early intervention and vocational training, means we can help them fulfill their full potential and their right to be upstanding and responsible members of society. I am tired and fed up of the attitude that Down syndrome is equated with suffering, with curses, as a result of sin. I am tired of hearing about Down syndrome children being neglected, not being sent to school, whilst his or her siblings, 
who are neurotypical, get an education and are invested in. I'm tired of the exploitation of people with special needs, shown, for example, in the disastrous Lagos State data capturing exercise for people with disabilities in regards to COVID-19 relief funds brought to light just a couple of months ago on this show. In my experience with early intervention, investment, time, and love, my daughter is flourishing. She is a gift from God and has brought such light, joy, and purpose to our lives. I am blessed and honored to be her parent. The fact is that 25% of Nigeria's population has some kind of special need. We must invest in the education and care of these individuals as it will make us better society as a whole. <clears throat> that was long. It's not about the length, it's about the content. The, the content was deep. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. And it was heartfelt. It, was it conveyed the right message. Mm -hmm. And it just gets one wondering that, okay, so this is one of the things we are missing as a people, as a government. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, okay, my wife is, in, is into early years education, and a lot of times I've seen uh, recruitments where, but of course not in Nigeria, where people, where there's a call out for uh, teachers that have expertise in handling children with special needs. Mm -hmm. And whenever I see that, the question always, I always still say, okay, how many people in our climb have that mm -hmm. expertise? Mm -hmm. So even from the on-go, I know there's one around Igbobi, because I know a parent that travels far every single day to take the child there. It is stressful, it is, I, I can't even imagine what the kind of pain she goes through. And she has to go there every single day. But the question then is, even at that, I can't even remember the name, I don't even know where it is, but I know the parents. Even at that, what is the quality of education mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is being given to the kids? Do we, do we treat them like you said? Do we treat them like, oh, we're just helping them out so that they don't waste? Or do we treat them like they're part of us? Mm -hmm. And they can do, and what you said about, I did a, I, okay, I was going to shoot a documentary some years ago on Down syndrome, but it never came to write. So I did some uh, research on Down syndrome. I saw mm -hmm. the different classes and different types mm -hmm. of Down syndrome. And I realized that in some parts of the world, the kids, because they, they are very deep thinkers and they're mm -hmm. able to focus. So at times they give them, is it regimented kind of work? And they are very yes. active. But we don't even consider them here at all. No so, education. Uh, and this is coming from what I think Tony said, and mm -hmm. now I understand. Mm -hmm. The fact that mothers are made to hide them. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see them. Yes. And because the stigma. Mm -hmm. The and, and, and Tony, mm -hmm. maybe I shouldn't say this here, but I'm really, really, really proud of you. Thank you. I mean, for standing out and standing up mm -hmm. for something that is rare. Because you could actually take care of your child in private without mm -hmm. actually coming out. You could even take your child abroad. Mm -hmm. You could do a lot of things, but you decide not to fight for just Simon, mm -hmm. but to fight for other kids as well and help other mothers to come out from the closet. Yeah. Because when you keep hiding these children, you're just making a bad situation so much worse. Mm. So yeah, thanks, definitely. Tony. I think, I think you are my MVP. For <laughs> thanks, Tony. I'm just... All the times I've been going through your work mm -hmm. on social media, I'm usually challenged, touched. I don't know what to say, mm -hmm. but... What I'm going to say to us as a people is that we should learn to grow beyond superstition. Mm -hmm. Let's solve our problem based on research yeah. and scientific yeah. base. The superstition. Scientific big reasons for things to solve yeah. problems and then use the art, just like what mm -hmm. you did. They write the stories and those to, to mm -hmm. actually tell, make people work. understand yeah. it better. Mm -hmm. So let's not be too spiritual, spiritual unnecessarily, exactly. overtly spiritual unnecessarily. I'm very proud of you, Ma. Oh, thank I'm you. Sure so this is, is this is one of the things that I think it's really important to highlight is the cultural stigma, the superstition element, and the role that religious um, organizations Plenty. have in perpetrating this myth. Mm. Um, there's nothing wrong with believing in God, in being a spiritual person. I'm a godly person, a spiritual person. However, we as whatever, whether you're Muslim, Buddhist, Christian, Catholic, whatever it is, you have a responsibility to your community to speak the truth and not perpetuate lies. And the, the, the fact is that these lies are being perpetuated and they are destroying people's homes and they're destroying people's lives. And for example, telling a baby to fast 
a baby. That's I'm sure it would be a baby. God cannot even That's That's wickedness. Do, do <laughs> you wickedness. But the funny thing, you have malaria, mm -hmm. you go to the hospital. You have typhoid, you go to the hospital. Then you have a special need child, and you go to church. I mean, then the child is made too fast. Who is responsible? Mm -hmm. Is the both parents that brought her to it, or him or her to it? Just like the sickle cell mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the man and the woman mm -hmm. is responsible for the child. Mm -hmm. Rather, they said, mm -hmm. in local parlance, oh, he or she is an Obanji. <laughs> not those things we yeah. should stop it yeah. and let's take responsibility and when said, it's mm -hmm. yes we know the by what the bible says about uh sick, okay this is even not a sickness but we're talking about sicknesses mm -hmm. generally mm -hmm. we know that exists but we still go to the hospital we know that god can do a miracle mm -hmm. anything can yeah. happen but you still play take your role but well, i'm going to say something this down syndrome is my miracle so i ask i would never take it back I would never ask God to take it away because why would I take away my blessing? Mm. For me, it's been the biggest blessing given to our family, both my in-laws and uh, wow. ourselves is this child. Yeah. This wow. child has been a blessing. So I just think it's important to change people's the perception. Mm. Just, just the mindset. Well, done. And, um, well, we'll just try and, and do that by the way we do our lives. Mm. It's it's working. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Yeah. So up next is the wonderful Felix.